the opportunity of working every day in Peconic Estuary and so what I'd like to do is share with you some of the students that I've had the pleasure to work with and some of the animal life that we come across every day during our lessons. Liam, could you show us our first animal? Hi Liam, welcome to Estuary Live. What kind of animal do you have there, Liam? I have a horseshoe crab. Wow, that horseshoe crab seems to be pretty big. Can you tell me what this big, long, skinny thing is sticking off of him? That is the tail. Now, does he use this tail for anything special, like karate, or what does he do with that? He turns to turn himself over if he gets stuck on his back. Oh, so if he's walking around, that's how he flips over. Now, I noticed here in the center of your horseshoe crab body, there are these big brown toothbrushes. What are those big brown toothbrushes there in the center? His mouth. That's his mouth? Now, what does a horseshoe crab eat with two toothbrush mouth pieces? He's, he, he's the vacuum cleaner of the of the Peconic Bay and he cleans all the, he cleans the floor. Oh, so he cleans in there. Now, what is this section right here? Maybe if I hold onto it, could you point to the gills of the horseshoe crab? Right Excellent, and so those gills fan open and close, drawing in the water and oxygen. Yep. Now, Liam, can you tell me maybe where the eyes are and you can hold on to them? The eyes are right here. So he has two big eyes on either side, and those eyes are compound eyes. So they see in front of him, behind him, and beside him at all times? Yep. Wow, and I noticed there's something up here in the front. Is that his nose? Nope, that's his, that's his uh, ordinary eye. Regular old ordinary simple eye, and so he just sees straight ahead with that. Well, Liam, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for showing us the horseshoe crab. Now, do you think the horseshoe crab should go back in the water and get a little air and oxygen from the water? Great, thanks so much. Our next student has an animal that's from a rocky en environment that you'd find in Peconic Estuary. Hi, how you doing? What kind of animal is this? This is a sea star. And I noticed the sea star has these five points um, in front of him. What are all these points? Each of these points are called a ray and they have eyes on the end of them. Wow, so quickly looking, it looks like there's five rays on there. So at the end of each one of these rays is one eye? Yeah. Wow, now what is this orange dot right here on the front? The Do orange dot is its nose, That's where, it, and that's where it breathes from. So it breathes water and oxygen in through the top and then fills up his whole body with water? Where does it come out? It comes out at around. Or, like, out of those tube yeah. feet? Wow, so he has 750 little tiny places for that water to exhale? Yes. It's a pretty interesting animal you have. Now, is this an invertebrate? Does he have any bones in there? He has no bones. He has no bones. You're exactly right. Well, thank you so much. And I was wondering if we had um, anyone else related to the sea star. Do we happen to have the sea star's cousin? I think we do. And I believe it's the sea urchin. Great. Now. Um, this sea urchin right here, when I take a look at him, and when you look at the sea urchin, you can see he has lots of spines on his body. How does that sea urchin feel when you hold him? He feels rough and bumpy. Wow, rough and bumpy, much like the Atlantic Forbes sea star. Now, let's flip him over. I noticed when I looked down here on the bottom, there was this white dot. Can you tell us what those white dots are? They are five little teeth. Wow, so if we were able to look close, you would see those five teeth that would open and close like that. And now, what does a sea urchin eat with five very simple teeth? He eats seaweed. Seaweed? So he's kind of like a herbivore or a vegetarian? That's pretty cool. Great, thanks so much. And I think we have some more estuary animals. And these animals look like there would be animals that would be found in a snail shell. Wow, or is that a rock? What do you have there? Uh, a knobbed whelk. A knobbed whelk. Now, the best way to tell a whelk if it's knobbed or not, would you look where? You would look at the shell and there's knobs all around it. Wow, excellent. And I see here across the beach we have another whelk as well. Maybe we could check out this whelk that we have here. Now. This whelk looks a lot different. It has something on the front and it looks channeled. And this one, the knobbed whelk, has those big bumps. Now when you look at the channel whelk, you can almost run your fingers through the top of the shell. Mm -hmm. Now I have to ask, what is this other item in your hand? 
it's um, a whelk egg sack. It, um, all these little tiny things hold up to 15 to 25 eggs, and um, they, and whelk starts out just this size. Wow, so inside that egg case, they're only about a centimeter or a millimeter? Yeah. Wow, and then they grow that shell their whole life. Thank you so much, girls, for and, sharing your snails. And this mouthed whelk eats clams. He likes to eat clams. Thank you so much, ladies. And I think we have some animals now that walk around on the bottom of our estuary. Hi, girls. What kind of animals do you girls have? I have a flat-clawed hermit crab. And, and this is a long-wristed hermit crab. Wow. Now, how can you tell the difference? Like, how do you know that's a long-wristed hermit crab? Well, it's like smaller. Smaller, and he has long wrists, yeah. I'll bet, and long claws. Excellent. Now, how do you tell that your hermit crab is different? Because it has bigger claws, and they are flatter. Okay, great. Now, I think we have another crab who's walking on in, so let's check out this next crab. And he's a little bit bitter, bigger. Thank you, girls. And it's our spider crab. Now, mm. I'm looking at your spider crab, and I notice you hold him from the back of the shell like that. Why do you hold him at the back of the shell? Because if you hold him in the front, then he could snip you with his claws. Oh, wow. So it's almost like you sort of double-jointed. He could bend back. Excellent. Now, I notice he's sort of hairy and fuzzy all over the top. Do, do you have any idea why he has all that stuff growing on him? He has some kind of spit from his mouth that he puts on his claws and rubs on his back and puts algae on it and then it makes him camouflage. What? So you're saying he licks his claws and puts the seaweed on his back to camouflage? It's a pretty interesting estuary animal. Now we have another animal coming up. Thank you so much. And this may be our oddest animal of the day. Hi there Liam. Uh, can you tell us about your animal? This is a hairy sea cucumber. The hairy sea cucumber. Can you tell everybody how it feels? Slimy. Slimy. Now, this hairy sea cucumber, where would we find him if we wanted to find him in the estuary? On rocks and in the mud. And in the mud. Wow. That's really awesome. Well, thank you so much, boys and girls, for sharing all those great animals.